A few weeks ago, a group of us meeting in the Hawke's Bay for General Synod were taken on a tour of flood-impacted areas after Cyclone Gabriel hit last year. Many of you will remember the devastation reported to us through news media. The loss of property, the loss of identity that so, so many people had to suffer. That cringeworthy sense of loss and the mind-blowing media reports. Storms, they can be destructive and scary. We know that. In the Pacific, there's a dedicated hurricane season that runs from the beginning of December through to the end of March. Devastation and loss of property, loss of loved ones, of friends around me, was something I got to know well. And even though as a child, I loved watching those storms. I did so as long as I was in the safety behind our louvered windows in the vicarage I grew up in. I didn't like watching them if I was out in the car, and especially not if I'd had to be in a boat. And that's exactly where the disciples find themselves this morning. They're out on the Sea of Galilee, headed for some time out, time of rest, when literally out of the blue, with shattering suddenness, a storm appears. Let's think about the boat they were on. About 30 years ago, just such a boat was found embedded in the seabed of the Galilean Sea. It dated back to the time of Jesus, although no one could say whether he had actually sat in that particular boat. But it's called the Jesus boat. It's about seven and a half meters long, about three meters wide, and just over a meter high. There were 12 men plus Jesus in the boat that day, the scriptures tell us. But what scripture doesn't tell us is that there were maybe four or five others there to row this thing, plus a helmsman. So as you can imagine, it was quite a tight fit. And in a storm... Any of you boaters might know, the sails have been lowered. So there they are, in the boat, sail low, being tossed from side to side, up and down, as the storm rages all around them. And there was Jesus, asleep in the back of the boat. The disciples, yeah, they were afraid, much like we would be in any such situation. So they call out to their leader to help them. Jesus awakens, looks out, and says, Peace, be still. And the storm stops. We're all familiar with the story. And for most of us, this is where it ends. But there is so much more in this passage that we've just heard. Jesus asks the disciples, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? To me, that's the point of this passage the lack of faith of the disciples when the storm is raging. 
And our question for today, are we any better than the disciples when life storms are raging around us? Do we fully trust God's presence? Or do we cry out, asking where God is when we need him? Think back of the earthquakes. Of all the stories in the New Testament, perhaps this story is the most symbolic of the Christian church. For you see, we are now the disciples in the boat. We come in, we take our pews in the nave of the church. Nave in Latin means the boat. This story has always been important to the Christian faith because it is solid evidence that having Jesus with us in the storms of our lives is never a guarantee that there won't be a storm tomorrow. But even though, and even though Jesus is with us, many of us, like the disciples, lose hold of our faith. Remember, in their fear, they expected Jesus to care about them and to save them from danger. Eleven Sharp, we often act like the disciples. We expect others to share our panic and share our distress. And if they seem detached from our personal situation, we turn around and accuse them of not caring about our suffering. The disciples just wanted Jesus to care. You know, we all operate out of some kind of fear. We fear having to give up control of our lives when we turn them over to God. But really, how much do we turn our lives over to God? We're like the disciples. When push comes to shove, we question God every time. Don't you care? When the disciples realized the presence of Jesus was fully with them, the storm became calm. You see, to voyage with Jesus is to voyage with peace. In the presence of Jesus, we can have peace in the worst storms that hit us. Because God does not abandon us. He never does. And in Romans chapter 8, Paul affirms this. Nothing, nothing in life or death can separate us from the love of God through his son Jesus Christ. Jesus, our Lord. Anytime we have a storm. I want us also to think about the boat that we heard about. I've already told you it wasn't a very big one. Not much room for moving around. And suddenly there's this big storm. One that have, was one that was surely so severe as to cause the fishermen to be afraid. And they knew the sea. Imagine yourself in that boat and your leader, the one who actually got you into it in the first place. He's laid out in the back, sleeping. I can't imagine. I can't imagine the overwhelming feeling of fear anger and disbelief those disciples must have had. 
But remember this. These men, they had actually enough faith in Jesus that when he told them to drop everything back at the beginning of his ministry, they did. Yes, they had some questions, but basically they did follow but when faced with a storm, they question. I'm hoping that this is setting off alarm bells for some of us. I know it does for me. I have full faith in Jesus. I trust him and I believe in him. And I know he is here with me. Several years ago, I set plans for my life aside. And I answered God's call into full-time ministry. But I tell you, when those storms hit me, and they often do, I struggle to remember that moment. I said, yes, Lord, here I am. We all have storms in our lives. Those things that batter us and throw us around and hit us into the air, bring us to our knees. Things like death, divorce, loss of a job, hurtful words from a so-called friend, storms and their severity can change. And they cause us to forget our faith. And just like the disciples, when those storms bring us to our knees, instead of taking time to talk to God, we try to get up by ourselves. We're human. And we end up always crying, God, God, do you not care? Instead of remembering everything that Jesus has taught us, we turn to horoscopes, tarot cards, palm reading. We search for help in any number of places instead of, focus, instead of focusing on the one who is already right there beside us. And that's sad. Today, you might feel you have your personal storms under control. Tomorrow, you might not. In the storms of our lives, we don't just lose or forget about our faith. We sometimes lose our minds. Eleven Sharp, remember this. Jesus promises, promises us again and again and particularly today that he will be with us to the end. When I confessed that I loved watching the storms as a child, I also told you that I needed safety, if not around me, close by. Remember that Jesus is close by. We will endure storms. We will face difficulties in our lives. But we must remember that through it all, Jesus is right here guiding us. Just like with the disciples, Jesus is in our boats. My boat, your yachts, your canoes, your waka. Jesus is in the boat with you. He's there demonstrating the power to protect and care for his people, his church, his eleven sharp. Because there are no storms, none at all, that by the power of Jesus Christ, we can't endure. 
Jesus does care. Jesus is able to keep his people from sinking, falling into the full power and control of evil. There is absolutely no doubt that the storms in your life, like mine, will continue to rage. There is no doubt, absolutely no doubt, that we will continue to face difficult times in our journey. What is in doubt is who we turn to for help. Who is with us in our storms? Amen.